This week on the Going Off Podcast, we've got another double shot of Patreon-requested album reviews. First off, we're going to start with The Minstrel Show by our hometown boys make good, Lil Brother. So this review was requested by Ben Collin. And uh, thanks a lot, bro, because this one took me back. <laughs> really did, man. It, it's been a minute since I've even listened to this album, so it was a nice little reminder. Because, right, like, right. Th- there's parts of the album, and we'll get into it, where yeah. this as an album is, it's different. Because it's it's kind of a concept, but only in its presentation. Yeah. But there's some tracks on there, like, like cheating. It's, it's not, not a straightforward thing. It's in but the it's, presentation of being like a... A love song, like R&B, but it's not funny. Like, it's not like, it's not like, it's not, there's no jokes in it. Like, it's like a Weird Al R&B parody song, but there's yeah. no joke. Like, it's like, oh, you were cheating on me, girl. That was so bad. And it's like, that's all they had. Like, they wrote the template for, hey, we're going to make the, the, you know, woman done me wrong song. And it's like, we're going to add in the jokes later, but let's just have the template here. And they just never added in what was supposed to be funny about this song. You know what I mean? Because it has the air of comedy, but not the execution of it, you know? Speaking of kind of open-ended, um, I might have just missed it, but with the album being called The Minstrel Show, right? Uh-huh. Did they ever really explain, like, no. No, they how... Did not. It yeah. was supposed to be, like, I know what a minstrel show is, and I've seen clips, and they're horrible, and they're extremely uncomfortable and unfortunate, but I think people should see them to get a glimpse of where pop culture and our history was at a disturbing period of time. But mm. with this, like, I know at one point the minstrel shows turned into black people actually putting on black face, but playing the stereotypes. Yeah. But... The album here doesn't really portray that at all. Like, it doesn't turn the concept of the minstrel show on its head, except for, which might have been the unintentional little bit, is that it's hosted by a white guy, Chris Hardwick, which is kind of random, but he's the host of the minstrel show. And isn't, like, Paul Rosenberg in there at some point? Is he? Yeah, he's oh, at the shit. end. It's like, this is Paul Rosenberg. I gotta go back to my kids now. Oh, like, it's yeah, sort of like, right. This album is fucking weird, dude. It's, it's a like, trip. It's like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Like, what's the, that? like, this really does feel like I'm listening to my friends' albums whenever they do these skits. The intro and the outro are kind of weird, but everything in the middle is great. The beginning is funny. When they say, you're watching UV and you black niggas production. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that threw me oh, off. Oh, yeah. And then at the <laughs> end, it's like... Hey, uh, we've got something to say about UPN. UPN, and the album just ends with a long censor beep. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I'm telling you the truth, I feel about this motherfucker. Oh, you want to hear the truth? I was like, that, that was funny. But the problem is, there's been no setup this whole time. Like, yeah, everything in the middle just kind of goes along as... It it feels like a normal album, yeah. Yeah. Like, if there were songs where it's like, you know, it'd be interesting if they had songs like dissecting gangster rap, right? Where mm. it's like, you know, it, it sounds like it's a gangster rap song, but then halfway through it's like, well, let me tell you what I'm actually going through. You know, like it starts off like, yeah, I'm just here to kill you, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, because my mother never loved me. And it, you know, like and, that would have been and cool. were there any tracks that like dissected like race? Yeah, yeah. Like that never happened. Like, there was never even, like, a, oh, they want us to act like this. It's, like, the new minstrel show. Like, you know, like, yeah, there was never any commentary. It was just sort of window dressing for the thing, you know? Yeah, it was interesting presentation because most of the songs just tended to be, like, either love songs or just, like, heartfelt. Like, dude, all for you. Oh, my. Can we just skip ahead to all for you? I had to play that song back, like, three times. Oh. I, that is a rarity, by the way. That's a stamp of approval by a rap <laughs> critic. I remember the first time I ever rewound a verse, it was The Mystery of Chess Boxing by Master Killer. Oh, yeah. And ever since I, I – and I actually had to, like, call up a friend of mine. I was like, yo, have you ever actually heard this verse? <laughs> like, you know? So I, I've always considered the the rewind – to be like, that's how you know it was. It was so good. Your brain just needs that, that, 
that that serotonin or whatever the fuck that it got again. You know what I mean? Like the uh, the the intro to the song is called uh, "Diary of a Mad Black Daddy," and it's the outro of the last track, the the chorus being sung by by a young kid. And you hear, like, this older man yelling in the background. And he's, like, yelling for his son's attention. And at the end of it, like, the, like there's this phone ringing. And it's like, is anyone going to answer that phone? And and the, the kid answers the phone and goes, Daddy, it's for you. It's like, hello. And then the next song just starts, and it sounds like it's over a phone. And it's like, hey, Dad, this is for you. And it's like, oh, my fucking God, that song. It's just this guy... Talking about his marriage and fatherhood went to shit. And it's like, hey, you know, I can't be too mad at you for leaving me because I ended up doing it to my own son. And it's like, oh, God. I know a lot of people want me to fail as a father. And the thought of that haunts me, especially when I check my rear view mirror and don't see him in his car seat. So the next time it's late as night and I'm laid up with a woman, I'm going to make my wife talking about how we're going to make a life. I'm thinking about child support, alimony, visitation rights, because that's the only outcome if you can't make it right. But pissed off with your children feeling the same pain. So, Pop, how could I blame because you couldn't maintain? I did the same thing. It's just like, oh, oh, it's just, ah. You know, it's this is the opposite of serotonin. This is like, it's that, that bittersweet sort of like, when someone just tells a a, a, a truth, you know? Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. and it's just, there's no way to, it's kind of like cringe, but not the way that people use it today. Like, they're okay rappers who randomly can flip a switch and be fucking just incredible. Like, <laughs> you know, like, you listen to this, it's like, all right, this is good. I don't know what everyone was like, you know, wilding about, but okay. And then you hear like, um, again, uh, I'm looking at some of these lyrics, like, you don't want no problems. I'm a nigga that'll solve them. I don't know. Like, can we stop rhyming problem and solve them? Like, I mean, <laughs> Vanilla Ice killed that in, like, 1991. Oh, but, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But then, like, you have a lyric, like, work and plan a perfect verse, then burst like a person that jerked from a circus cannon, then landed to earth. It's me on the song, featured your fleet, breathing as strong. It's as a gypsy reading a palm with a drawn heater. And it's just like, this sounds clever, but when you think about it, it's like, wait, breathing like a gypsy reading someone's palm with a drawn heater? <laughs> you read it back, it's like, oh. Wait, does the gypsy have a gun? Why does the gypsy <laughs> have a gun? Wait, Why and would does the gypsy the, have the gun? Yeah, and does the guy who's getting his palm read have a gun? Why mm. does he have a gun? Is he like... Read my palm, but it better be positive. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you know, this is this is weird imagery. Like, but they were trying, like, you know, they were trying to come up with an unconventional punchline, but it's just confusing. So at the end of Hiding Places, it's mm. like Joe Scudder sounds like he's about to come up, and he's the white guy on uh, Loving It, right? And oh uh, yeah, you know, and you listen to Loving It, and you're like, okay, so there's a white guy on a raps on a rap album called The Minstrel Show. What what are they gonna do? <laughs> you know, like, what? <laughs> where's this gonna go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, at the end of one of the songs, it's like, oh, wait, that's another thing. Does it also feel like this album's a little out of order? Like at the end of uh, track number six, you hear some, you hear Joe's got to sound like he's rapping the verse to loving it, right? He's like, every day I wake up, hold him, on. and then someone comes in, uh, you're due on stage, uh, and like you know, you're due on stage in two minutes. He's like, oh, thank you too, you know, and he's getting up and he's getting ready to go, and you hear him walking, and it's just like, um, I know this is a white guy, and the concept is that this is a menstrual show. Is he about to like? What are you? Come on now, like where are you going with this? And, but then the next song doesn't have Joe Scudder in it. It's not um uh it's not loving it, which has that verse in it. It's something completely different. It starts off with poo rapping first, so it's just like, well then why did you even have that little thing at the end, you know? And then it was on like either sincerely yours or or still is through, where they're like, thank you for joining the minstrel show. This has been da 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 da. I uh you know executive produced by this guy. Da da da. And I was like, um, there's still three more tracks. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, they were oftentimes like rejoining and whatever. And it's like, 
I don't know. I didn't mind it. I, I, I thought it was a little weird, but it was whatever. I thought you were going to say the one song that, like, I wish I remembered which one it was, where, like, he starts a verse, and then he's like, I'm going to do it over. And then the next song starts, and it's like, that verse again, but it picks up. I thought that was pretty cool. It's the ending of Beautiful Morning. And he, it sounds like he's about to start another verse. He's like, wait, let me do it again. <laughs> he hit the start of the next beat. Yeah, that was pretty cool, actually. I didn't think it was out of order. And the, the things you're mentioning, they didn't register to me at the time. So I guess I must not have thought they were too weird. But I totally agree with you that, like, the songs go from good to great. They're not all great. Overall, it's a really solid album like there aren't too many low points except for like the unnecessary cheating the low points are the skits and like uh, that song it was just like it, it sounded like it was from a different album dude like it sounded like they originally planned to do like a whole like thing of like oh let's do a concept album like big poo was like hey let's do a concept album we're gonna do this this and this and uh, the other two guys were like eh, eh, i don't really know if i'm dedicated to this idea like if it was a variety show and it was like, hey, up next is so-and-so. And maybe like every three songs or whatever, there's like a novelty thing. But even as a novelty thing, why does it go on for almost four minutes? If it's a funny skit, get in and out. Fucking fifth in fashion is only a minute and 20. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a commercial. Dude, there should have been more commercial skits. If you're going to do skits for a minstrel show concept, have 30 second like ad things i think that would fit i will say i kind of didn't like the diary of a mad black daddy skit i understand how it led into it but i didn't like how he was talking in a manner that was supposed to be jokish you know oh these goddamn kids with the da -da 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 -da. Uh, how about you do that homework da -da -da. it's just like so over oh, yeah over ridiculous how so about you loving some long division yeah it's Where like, it's like it's... if this was leading into a funny song then yeah maybe yeah, like, it should not. have been, like, a serious <laughs> thing, like, you know, like, where the fuck were you last night? Get your ass, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like, th that would have been cool. But, it, yeah, like you said, it was just kind of like, oh, this is going into something serious? Okay. Um, you know? <laughs> but uh, but I did like when it actually did go through it and, you know, when it started and stuff. I didn't like this uh, this uh, one specific song where it's they repeated a, a, a certain type of play on words, and it was just kind of like... You guys didn't hear each other's verses. Like, on oh, not enough, right? Okay. Um, there was like, radio, them suckers never play us. Took our wax to the station, and they straight played us. I was ah, like, yeah. Um, first of all, you just rhymed play us with played with, us. With played us. Uh, and secondly, that it's a little confusing to the average person because you just said they don't play us, and then you said we took our wax to their station, and they played us. <laughs> like you know like, like i know I what you, it like yeah i know what you mean but like the average person is gonna be like wait so did they play them or not and then the <laughs> next line is like in the ne uh the next verse is like a big poo goes like yeah and they still trying to play us but not spin the record or disc and it's just like i get it other than those moments and just like general sort of like they're above average they're cool they're cool and then every now and then they'll hit you with a moment that's just like fucking shit i think slow it down was actually pretty nice uh where he's talking about like oh, yeah, yeah hitting on this girl he's like i'll scoop you up on my porch psych you know i got a nissan that i'm paying for still got a lease on you know <laughs> and that was a good line yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know so it's not, it's not like i'm completely like going like oh they fucking suck it really is kind of hard because it's just like well they really do have some like okay bars at times and at times they're fucking phenomenal but then they get weighed down by these fucking skits man the skits are bad. You hate the Meandering. skits. Meandering. I don't like the skits. You're right. Imagine if if every one of these skits like really had, you know, funny jokes in them that made you want to come back to them. You know? Right. This album would be elevated a lot more than just like, hey, the premise is supposed to be funny, but the execution actually it kind of isn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I want to give the album a four, right? Yeah. But the more I think about it, it's like, is it, though? Like, so, it's good. Like I, like, like I said before, it's good. It's not great. Yeah. Like, three and a half probably sounds the best because... That's literally where I am, too. While there's some really good songs on here, just 
overall, as like an entire thing, as experience, yeah, it just doesn't all hold up, you know. And it's unfortunate because when it's good, it's really good. So going to the next album, yeah, yeah, this is this is a long time coming, my friends. This is the long-awaited logic request. We've got uh, Zachary. Oh boy. Z- Zachary Taylor Thomas, Zachary Ty Bryan, um, oh, it's, it's Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Zachary Ty Bryan. I fucked up. Fucking Home Improvement fans out there are gonna eat me alive. Um, Zachary Askew, I think is how you say it. Again, I'm sorry if I did. It's A Y S C U E. I think that's Askew or Askew. I'm gonna say Z- Zachary Askew requests logic. The incredible true story. Is it incredible, though? <laughs> this is a tale as old as time. We say this every single time. We don't like logic? Not that. When, <laughs> when we request an album and I'm people bland. say, that's not the good one, this is the good one. Yeah, yeah, Logic's yeah. Logic's new album's trash. You gotta listen to his good one. Same thing mm. happened when we talked about uh, your boy, fucking... Uh, Absol, right? Where people are like, oh, no, no, don't listen to, what was it called? You need, you need to listen to Control System, because that's the really good one. So here we are, talking about Logic's uh, album that, from what I remember, most of the comments saying, this is his best. Yeah, oh, and, and of course, if we don't review this right, they're going to be like, well, that's album Logic. You need mixtape Logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. F- how far back... Are you going to push the goalpost, my friends? <laughs> you got to stick with it. So, yeah, we're talking about Logic the Incredible True Story. I didn't like it that much. How about you? F- fuck no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Dude, you have I... no idea. I was waiting. I was waiting for that fucking swerve. That, <laughs> man. I do it a lot. I went I? into this. I didn't have high hopes, <laughs> but your boy Logic, he made me. Inve- no, he pulled through. <laughs> Logic pulled it out. Logic had to do it to him. No, dude. People want us to like Logic so fucking bad, bro. Like, I'm sorry. It's just not. It's happening. impossible. I can't get into okay. Logic. It just won't happen. <laughs> so last time on the Going Off podcast, when we talked about. His last album, whatever the fuck it was called. Uh, everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. That's yeah, because right. I know he said he says it on here a couple times. You know, everybody uh, cool, everybody fine, everybody people, everybody died. Oh. Everybody, <laughs> everybody uh. cool. Um, so there was an underlining story on that album where it was a guy talking to God. Oh yeah, by... and you know what? I like that skit. Those skits. I, I didn't actually, like those. I really enjoyed them. I thought that they presented such a cool, interesting idea that I was like, wow, man, that makes me think about life and this. And That's actually really cool. This album on the other goddamn hand. Oh, what the wh- fuck is the point? Oh, my God. You wasted Spike Spiegel, bro. So basically what, what, what happens is randomly throughout the album, there are these skits of these two travelers. And oh, my God, bro. If this don't sound like the most fucking, like, some fanboy who likes Cowboy Bebop oh, wrote yeah. fan fiction about, like, what if Spike Spiegel was traveling on a spaceship with me? You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, hey, look, this is what it would be like, eh? And it's just like, oh, oh, we're listening to one of the greatest albums ever. The oh. album that changed everything. Stop it! Oh, I'm about to listen to that logic. Oh, you mean the album that changed everything? Oh, fuck oh. off. I I rolled so hard, I about flipped my goddamn car. Dude, I almost wanted to stop the album just from that. Like, no, Get the don't do that. fuck out of here. <laughs> they moved everything. They moved civilization out into space, and they're trying to find a new planet to inhabit. Now, on the surface, that doesn't sound... Like it would be that bad. Yeah, so like AE, what unfortunately you know. happens, though, is it gets so bloated and convoluted that what they try to do here is try to do clever social commentary on, like, four fucking issues, but none of them cement. So, 
you got the first track, and you got them, you got the establishing that they're in a spaceship and they're listening to a Logic album, and that it's the it's the album that changed the game apparently. Um, and then you listen to Fade Away, and it's like the most generic ass shit, dude. Um, okay, so, first of all, let's talk about these lyrics. Let's talk about these lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Day to day, man, that's the only way they gonna know my name until it fade away. Like, uh, yeah, they'll know who you are until time goes by and slowly you become less culturally relevant. That's just how everything goes. What, are you, what the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? They're going to remember my name until they don't. Like, well, yes, that's how that works. <laughs> like, you know, America's going to exist until it doesn't. Like, yes, that, yes, I know. <laughs> like, that's how all empires go, bro. Like, it, wouldn't it have been a little bit more ambitious to be like, it'll never fade away. Ah, that's the sort of... You know what I mean? But to just to be like, this thing will happen until it does not happen anymore. It's like, well, yes, I know that that's how it really goes. I also got to take off points for him thinking it was a clever in rhyme to say I read it on Reddit. Yeah, I was like, logic. You're not. Stop, Stop. it. Stop. That's literally <laughs> how that that play on words. That's re- the reason why that play on words exists. That's the point of the name Reddit. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, you're not clever. You know what I'm saying? So he does all this bullshit. Then we get this track where, oh, the system, the like the operating system on the spaceship Ugh. has like a voice to it now. Yeah. And it can talk to you. And that's supposed to be a funny bit. And her name is like Talia. There's nothing happening. There's nothing interesting. And there's nothing funny happening in these skits. Like with at least the everybody skit, it was like, wow, that's an interesting concept. Let's see where it goes. With this, it's just like, Okay, so that that's the same o- over the top black actor from the last album. Okay, because uh, you know the way he talks is like, "Yo, man, I want to talk to Big Sean, bro." It's like, oh, please stop talking like that. Please. Stop oh, talking oh like God. Because this <laughs> literally, it literally sounds like it literally sounds like Homeboys in Outer Space. Like fucking. It does. Hey, look, we got this high concept thing, but we got to bring in the black audience. You know, and like, we've even got a like a female voice on the computer that was on Homeboys in Outer Space. <laughs> you just made an album version of Homeboys in Outer Space and, without and the I'm fucking to... Simpsons producers. Oh, but I'm sorry. This is an incredible true story. It's not true. It's not incredible, and it's barely a story. Like. I'm not even sure if the applies. Like, (laughs) what part of this album is telling me any truth? This is one of those things where, like, hey, listen to all this backstory that happened. Wow, that seems very interesting. Why aren't you showing us that? Why are you just showing these two people talking and doing nothing with the information that you told us about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like... And then, and then, you know, they, he tries to uh, incorporate space themes into the Upgrade song, right? He's like, oh, my metaphors are on cloud nine. But then he says, and the meaning behind them is so vague. Which, vague is never a word positively used to describe a piece of art. His, his work is just so vague. Like, that's not what, no one says that. that that's when you're trying to insult someone, like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. It seems yeah. like you have no per. It seems like you don't really have any direction. This shit is vague. Hmm. Kind of like this fucking album. Where the fuck are you going with this? This yeah. album is incredibly vague. Yeah, dude. And because it, 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 it's like, ugh. Like I know what he's. He meant to say like cryptic or some shit like that. Yeah. Like, ooh, yeah. My stuff. You can't figure it out because it, uh, it evades a uh, 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 definition. You know that's what he was trying to go for. But vague is not the word to use for that. And then you have Like Whoa, maybe the worst song on the fucking album. This is like, wait, is he yeah. trying to make like a P. Diddy type, you know, hit song now? Like, oh, like, whoa. And this is for everybody going through it. Like, whoa, through it, like, whoa, through it, like, whoa, going through it, like, whoa. And I'm See, like, the, the thing is, we're talking a lot about the skits because for me, honestly, that's all I fucking remember about this goddamn album because the songs are so fucking forgettable. Like, like I said, this chorus, like, whoa, through it, like, whoa, going through it, like, whoa. Again, fu- fucking compelling. Like, what the fuck are you talking? This is boring. <laughs> and then, and then from Lundis to Perry. Yes, very extraordinary. Fuck around and took the bus and the ferry. Should have seen the itinerary. Then we made it back home, like, whoa. I went from London to Paris. Yeah, that's very extraordinary. All right, that's cool. I fucked around and took a bus and a ferry. 
Like, usually when someone says, like, I fuck around and did this, they're like, oh, I fuck around and made a million. I didn't even try, and I did this yeah. insane thing. You know, like, that. that's what they mean by that. But I fucked around and took the bus and the ferry. And- <laughs> you know, have you ever just fuck around and use public transportation? <laughs> and Who I can relate? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not even gonna analyze that anymore. I can't do any better than that. That was just perfect. <laughs> How are you gonna go on a song and ca- called "I Am the Greatest" and at one point say "I be on my big L braggadocios rap shit"? Fuck off, uh, <laughs> Big L. Why? Because uh, you fucking took a Big L on this goddamn album. <laughs> The only good song is Young Jesus to me. Even then, that has a whole bunch of problems with it. Like, okay, so this is the typical, like, braggadocious, I'm the best ever type of song, right? I mean, it's called fucking Young Jesus, you know? You know or the things that I hear, like, oh, he's a director. He wants to be a director. He likes movies. And it's just like... Oh, well, he really paints a picture, all right. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, this... It, you would think someone who's supposed to be having a director's eye would have some sort of fucking focus, you know? Oh, and then, okay, is it just me, or does he spell Limbo's name wrong? He goes, it's me and B-I-G-L-N-B-O. Yeah, yeah, he's, he skips the E, yeah. And it's just like, um, why? Why did you, why did you mess, why did you mess that up? Oh, oh, oh I look, the annotation. this is funny. Oh, yeah, huh? uh, artist annotation. Funny part is... How I don't fully spell his name, but this shit flowed so well, I said fuck it. Oh, okay. Mm. That that describes a lot of this album. Funny I, part? That's not a funny part. Yeah, it's not even... Yeah, it's not... Funny a, part? It's not even, like, a notable thing except for the fact that you spelled it wrong. His verse actually wasn't bad going through this verse, right? Still can't believe I didn't get a shorty pregnant, man. That's the definition of a life sentence. A whole lot of beef, no bread, no lettuce, because I couldn't keep it in my briefs, man. That's pathetic. Fuck all that back and forth. This ain't a game of tennis. I'll be in my motherfucking chamber like the Senate. I get, like, you, like, oh, okay. You got bars, all right. Scared to go outside, but I know I can't prevent it. I'm for, oh, oh, the way he rhymed this, he says, scared to go outside, but I know I can't prevent it. I'm... Forever alone in my mind. You didn't have a rhyme for prevent it, did you? I had to go outside, but I know I can't prevent it. I'm forever alone in my mind. <laughs> it's like, that, like, rhymes like that just sound like, okay, you didn't have anything. Like, you know? And then, and, but then the next line is, see, I'm a self-diagnosed hypochondriac, either at the club or on the tour bus is where you'll find me at. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I heard I'm a self-diagnosed hypochondriac, I was like, can we make a song about that? Because what's that about? You know, like, I was like, wait a minute, what? And then you look at the thing, it's like, oh, yeah, every now and then, you know, I get a little tremor. Da, da, da. I was like, that sounds like an interesting song. Why aren't you talking about that? But instead, he's talking about, again, not a bad first verse. But then afterwards, he's like, yeah, I know that I'm living like I got it okay, yeah. But I swear that I'm not that neurotic over here, yeah. He said, I'm either at the crib or on the tour bus. That's where you'll find me. And then the line he said before that was, he's a self-diagnosed hypochondriac. So my brain goes like, is that, is that a person who doesn't go out much? But then no, you look and you say, oh, it's someone who has tremors. Well, that wasn't explained in any capacity in the verse. And then he goes on and says, yeah, I know that I, I'm living like I got it okay, yeah. And it's like, you, wait, you're living like you got it okay? But I thought you were uh, uh, either in your crib or on a tour bus. So you seem pretty alone. And you're apparently a hypochondriac. So you're not living like you got it okay. And then he says, but I swear that I'm not that neurotic over here. Yeah. It's like, oh, so is that... Again, like, I'm just thinking, like, where the fuck are you going with it? You're like, he's tying himself in knots and not... Like, there's no clear... You need to be clear on what you're talking about. And that little verse right there, it was just like... Look, if I didn't give you any hint of what was happening, I just started rapping that to you, you'd be confused. Because it doesn't... It doesn't make it clear what the fuck is happening. And then you get a second verse where you got Big Limbo coming in. And, you know, they're all right. They're cool. But, like, after a while, they're trying to flow over each other. They're trying to do the Raekwon and, you know, uh, Ghostface killer thing. But it was like, you can tell they didn't record these at the same time. So they're just cutting in the audio at different points. And, like, like there, there will be a part where, okay, first of all, Limbo has this line where he says, uh, you better believe us or leave us. Grabbing your bitch's cleavage like woo-ha. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, and this was the song you liked? Uh, not for that line. <laughs> you're, you're fucking tearing it to shreds over here, and I'm like, this was the good one. Yeah, I know. And then bitches want an autograph. I signed them titties in crayon. Like, goddamn. That was hilarious to Big Limbo. So he says, I saw them titties and crayon like, God damn! Like, that's not God damn. That's just, why did you do that? Like, How could you do that? Like, that wouldn't you know, work well. Like, the reality of him, first of all, having a crayon on him. <laughs> like, that's what person silly, yeah. over four has a crayon on them? <laughs> but, but I understand it's a ridiculous situation, right? But he's like, hey, can I have an autograph? I'm a huge fan. And <laughs> all that Limbo, you know, the world famous Limbo... <laughs> <laughs> signing autographs and he how did it. logic get limbo for the album that that is quite the get and then he signs the titties in crayon <laughs> and afterwards he goes god damn like you know like like that scenario just looks like like hey could you you know assign this piece of paper no takes out a crayon rubs it on her breast which leaves no mark because Crayons don't really leave a mark on skin. <laughs> and then yeah, afterwards, no. he thought that was so fucking funny. He was like, God damn. He's like, uh, okay. Uh, God damn. Why did I waste that great line on Logic <laughs> album? I should have used it on my own shit. I'm just giving this shit away. Like, couldn't you just start this album with the sound of you just sucking your own dick? Couldn't you just do that? That'll be the next one. Maybe you could do, oh, ooh, you like using science, right? So... Uh, he uses a portal gun and just sticks his dick in the portal and just <laughs> sucks his own fucking dick. Because that's exactly what the fuck this album was. Him sucking his own dick for no goddamn reason and not giving us any reason to give a shit. I'm sorry. This album is bad. This album is bad. Sorry. I could barely make it through it the second time. This isn't one of those, listen to this because it's so horrible. It's just like, no, he's competent. He's just not anything beyond that. Like, I think that's a better description, right? Because to just say it's bad is not doing it justice, right? It's not, it's not like evil. It's not like, you know, this goes against what hip hop is or anything like that. It's just uneventful and uninteresting and really wants you to think it is. Like, I'm reading these lyrics and, like, they're not bad, but, and, like, and he's not bad as a performer, but he does, he's not good at painting pictures, which. No. He, which is something he seems to think he is good at. Right? Like, I'm, I'm expecting fucking Ghostface Killer on these fucking songs. Right. right? Like, he's yeah. going to give us stories that are so descriptive that it's just like, dude, I feel like I'm on the fucking spaceship. You know what I'm saying? But no. Yeah. The, these songs have nothing to do with anything like that. And you can't ignore it because there's skits and the fucking album cover. It looks like he's piloting a ship. What would you give it? Um... Maybe two. I would say two. Yeah, I think that's fair. I was, and I know we're gonna catch half, shit, but fuck but it. But then I remembered all the pointless ass skits. So two for the going off podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out this week. Big thanks out to our good friend Darian Dawes for finally joining us. Long overdue. We should have had him on it a long time ago, but better late than never. Uh, hopefully, have them on again in the very near future. Talk about more Dem tweets. This is your first time checking us out on the show. All of our old episodes are on iTunes and on SoundCloud. Just search Goin' Off Podcast. G-O-I-N apostrophe off podcast. Follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Patreon. And until next time, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm the Rap Critic. <laughs>